JC doesn't just have a farming background, but he also spent a lot of time at SDSU, and I think it's relevant for him to tell that story. Yeah, so I, you know, I worked on at SDSU from about, I started part-time when I was 16 and 94, and I worked there basically full-time all the way through till 2014. And I had a lot of jobs over the years working on different breeding programs and crop, crop performance testing. But my, my last job where I got into the soil health was with uh, Dr. Sexton. Of course, I got in contact with, with Dwayne Beck and then we were part of the SARE program, which is the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program, where we flew around the country, went to all these different soil health events and uh, saw a lot of interesting things, met a lot of very interesting people. But what put me in a unique position was I would, we would go to these meetings, but then we would come back to South Dakota and actually do the experiments. And then we would watch these experiments progress as the summer went by. And I have to admit, I was a little bit of a skeptic at first, but after seeing the difference that this makes, I was just sold on it and I brought it home to the farm. Just to give you one example, in, in 2013, we did a, there was a grazing study that was done. It wasn't my, my study, but I, I helped out a little bit with it. But uh, we, hit, we, put, we planted oats into some soybean stubble and they put up a, a poly wire and they, mo they mob grazed it. And then what they did is behind the cattle, they went through after they ate the oats down and then they put in a warm season mix. And by the time that when the cattle got to the end of the plot, they brought them back and ran them through a second time. And the gains worked out really well. It, it actually, it worked out, it was a really good system. But the next year, we were, Peter and I were driving down to work one, one morning and he said to me, I want you to go out in, in, into this one plot where we had the cattle last year, I want you to take some notes. But I'm, I want you just to walk out there and just take notes, but I'm not gonna tell you what you see. I was really curious as to what I was supposed to be looking for. And as I walked through the plot, I found two perfect rectangles of just pure solid weed, weeds, and it was all grass weeds. And so I went and I told Peter what I had saw, and he told me, yeah, he says, uh, what you're seeing is where we fenced it off and didn't allow the cow trap to go through, but we hate it. So the cattle basically ran through the rest of the field and mob grazed, and we, they weren't allowed to travel through this. And where the cattle weren't allowed to travel, this is in corn, sorry, I'd say that, it's in Roundup corn, it was this pure weeds and it was clean as can be where the cattle had grazed. And so we took, we took a soil penetrometer and took pen, pen, penetrometer ratings just to see if, there's, if there was any compaction. And there was basically is all not significant. There's no compaction whatsoever. And after that, I become a believer in this stuff. And uh, there's something to all this. And, and we took biomasses too, and there was 1,100 pounds of weed biomass where the cattle hadn't grazed and then basically nothing, you know, where they did graze. So that's just one component of the system. And it's amazing the difference that it makes. But what's unique about mixing goats and cattle together that I noticed, the cattle will eat certain things and not others, and the goats will slick up the rest. We actually watch the goats eat bull thistle. They, they will go up to a bull thistle and they'll strip that thing down to just a stick sticking up and there's nothing left.